Hi everyone, my name is Corinne Chan. In this AVP, we will talk about bar service and bartending, essence of bar tools and equipments, facts about cocktails, classification of alcoholic beverages, types of wine, evaluating wine, prepare and mix cocktails and non-alcoholic drinks, wine making, recommending appropriate wine and food combinations to customers, open and serving wine, decanting wine, and checking wine fault. So, let's start. Bar service and bartending. Bar service. All bar service includes professional bartenders, ice, and soft drinks. The alcohol bars also include beer, wine, juice, mixes, and condiments. Bartending. It refers to the art of mixing wines and spirits, drinks preparation, beverage services, merchandising, and good customer relations. It is also the specialty of blending wines and spirits, drink readiness, refreshment administrations, promoting and great client relationship. In the next topic, I will show you what are the basic tools and equipments that you will need in starting a bar business. And these are very much important to have in your bar. Bar tools and equipments. Bar spoon. This is a spoon with a long handle used to stir mixed drinks in tall glasses. You can also use the back of the spoon for layering drinks. Bar towels. It is used to keep your bar clean. You need it in case of a spill. Bartender's book. It is a mixed drinks recipe book and bartender's guide. It is a great reference when you need to look for recipes. Blender. A blender is essential to make your frozen drinks. Make sure you get a heavy-duty blender for blending your mixed drinks. Bottle opener. It is one of the main tools at the bar. Every bartender should have a bottle opener. Can opener or can punch. A can opener is a tool to remove one of end of a can. A can punch is a tool to make a hole in juice cans. Champagne or wine stopper. A wine stop, a special stopper with two wings that clamps over the lip of a champagne bottle. It also keeps the sp champagne sparkling. Citrus zester or stripper. A special tool that cuts one fourth inch wide strips of citrus rinds. Cocktail muddler. It is used a lot to crush cherries and minced leaves for some mixed drinks. Cocktail shaker. They are very useful for shaking your mixed drinks. There are two types of shakers. In the picture, it is called the standard shaker and it has a built-in strainer. Boston shaker. And this is the other type which is the Boston shaker. It doesn't have a built-in strainer so you will need to use cocktail strainer. So it is a strainer used in a Boston shaker to strain mixed drinks. It, and it helps a lot when straining into several glasses. Corkscrew or wine opener. This is a wine opener. So this one, this is the wine opener and this is the corkscrew. So th the corkscrew is also the also known as the best friend of the waiter. Ice bucket and ice tong. The ice bucket is a container that holds the ice. The ice tongs is a tool to pick up ice cubes for your drinks. Jigger or measure. This is a measuring cup. There are many sizes of jiggers. The most common is the double-ended jigger with one ounce and one and one half ounce measuring cups. Juicer or citrus creamer. Used to extract the juice of the citrus fruits. There are many types of of juicers. There are manual juicers and electric juicers. Knife and cutting board. This is necessary to cut your fruit garnish. Measuring cups are useful for adding ingredients to punches. Measuring spoons are useful for measuring some ingredients like sugar and spices. Shoes. Comfortable sleep resistant. So, 
Bartenders are standing all night behind the bar. They need comfortable sleep-resistant shoes to get them through a busy night. Speed pours. Very useful for free pouring. Result sticks. It adds a funky non-edible garnish to drinks. These are also used as stirrers. Draft beer tower. When you are pouring high volumes of beer day after day, you need a commercial quality draft beer tower that can keep the pace. Bar mats. It prevents spills and protects the surface of the bar from wet glasses. Cocktail rail. It holds those liquors and mixers that are frequently used by your bartenders to prepare drinks. Glass rack. It can free up valuable space and keeps glassware protected. So our next topic is classification of alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic drinks. An alcoholic beverage is any drink which contains ethyl alcohol or ethanol. So there are four classifications of alcoholic beverages. And these are spirits, liquors, beers, and wines. So first the spirits. These are the drinks obtained by distillation after fermentation from vegetables, grains, fruits, plants, and other substances, which are sugar or starch bound. So there are seven spirits, which is the whiskey, gin, rum, vodka, brandy, tequila, and vermouth. Whiskey. It is a general name for liquors of not less than 80% proof distilled from mash or grain. There are four types of whiskey. So first, scotch is made from malted barley and aged in oak barrel. Irish, it is made in the same way as Scotch whiskey, except it does not have the smoky flavor. Next is the Canadian, flavor from corn and barley. Then, Japanese, a product of Japan made in the same way as Scotch, Scotch whiskey. Gin, it is a grain mash distillate, redistilled with such aromatics as junior barley, coriander seeds, and angelica roots. While there are many types of gin, the most popular is London Dry Gin. Other types are Holland Old Tom and Shu Gin. Rum. This is the produce in the most tropical countries because it is distilled from sugar cane and molasses, a byproduct of manufactured sugar. Rums usually derive their name from their place of origin, and each has its own distinctive flavor. Main types of rum, light bodied, dry flavored rums from Puerto Rico, heavy bodied sweet flavored rums from Jamaica, and medium bodied rums from the Virgin Islands. Vodka. It is a natural spirit distilled from potatoes and filtered through charcoal. To be classified as vodka, the drink must have any, not have any aroma nor color and taste. So, the vodka is also very flexible in mixing cocktails. Brandy. It is distilled from fermented juice of ripe grapes or other fruits. When it is used alone, the word brandy implies a grape product. However, brandy may be made from other fruits and designated as peach brandy, apricot brandy, and etc. Tequila. It is distilled from the fermented sap of the maguey plant from Mexico. Vermouth. Vermouth is a fortified wine flavored with herbs and spices. Comes in two main varieties, the sweet and dry. While it can be sipped on the rocks as light aperitif, it also works in a wide range of cocktails. The next classification is the liquors. It is an infusion of fruit, sugar, syrup, or other flavor to brandy or other spirits. This gives the drink its characteristic taste. So, the list below is the popular liquors. The next classification is beers. 
It is a beverage produced out of the fermentation of cereal grain flavored with hops. So, there are four types of beer, the ale, lager, ginger beer, and fruit beer. Wines. So, this is the fourth classification of alcoholic beverages. So, wines, it is a naturally fermented juice of fresh ripe grapes, usually fermented from grapes. And it, the source is not from grapes, the fruit from which is which it is fermented must be specified. Most wines possess high levels of tannins, antioxidants, and phytochemicals that are derived from the skin of the fermented grapes. This can make wine helpful for lowering the risk of chronic diseases like cancer, chronic stress hormones, and other unsavory medical conditions. Our next topic is winemaking. There are a lot of factors in making wine because it differs from the types of grapes, the time when it is harvest, the season, the weather, and also the process of making it. So, in the next slide, I will show you a video on how the wine is made. Bolney is 40 acres, which is 16 and a half hectares. We grow red wine grapes and white wine grapes, and we actually make sparkling wine as well here, but we actually specialise in red wine, so a lot of this field behind us here is planted to Pinot Noir. We pick the grapes, we take them to the winery, we load them onto a sorting table where we actually just look at the grapes, if there's anything we don't want to go through into the press, we take them out. And then if it's white wine grapes or grapes of rosé, they go straight through into the press and then we press them in the press. With red wine it's a little bit different. With red wine we actually crush and de-stem, we take the grape stems off of the grapes, we don't really want them in with the wine as it's fermenting. Um, we get the colour, get the flavours and aromas and then once that's done you pump off all of the, the juice that you've created and then you take the grapes that are left um, and just put them very gently in the press just to get the last bit of juice out of them. English sparkling wine has become quite well recognised now. A lot of people have heard of it and it's got a brand name abroad as well. But there is more and more still being made and there's definitely interest and we sell out, we sell out of every bottle of still we make every year. So our next topic is types of wines. There are many types of wines, but I will discuss only four types. First, steel or natural wines, referred to as the 
as tables, table wines. They come in three colors and these are the red, white, and rose. Then the aromatic wines, it is made the same way as the natural wines, but during fermentation, aromatics are added. So next is for fortified wines. Fortified because the wines are made stronger or fortified by adding sugar. In order to increase their sugar content or by adding alcohol to increase their alcoholic content, as in, in the case of sherries. Sparkling wines. These are considered the king of all beverages. The most popular ones is the champagnes. They are made sparkling through a second fermentation inside the bottle. So our next topic is decanting wine. Decanting wine. So it is the process of pouring a bottle of wine into a decorative decanter before serving in order to separate any sediment that has formed. This process is typically saved for red wines that have been stored for more than 5 to 10 years. But some guests might specially request that their wine be decanted. Why do we decant? To expose the wine to oxygen, sometimes you need to remove sediment, and it's super classy. There are many types of decanters you can use. The most popular types of decanters are classic style, captain's decanter, decanters for special occasion. In fact, anything can be a decanter. With aged wine, there can often be sediment, so you need to gently pour it into the decanter and keep an eye through the neck of the bottle, and once you start to see sediment coming out, you stop pouring. And that's how you decant wine. The quality of wine is determined by its color, appearance, and its body. So here are some guidelines in how to evaluate some wines. So guidelines for evaluating wines. So first, the color. And there are basically three colors of wine, the pink, red, and white. So pink is called rose ranging from pink, salmon, and light rose tone. Red is called rouge when may range anywhere from purple to dark red to burgundy. So white is called bianc in varying clarity depending on the grape variety and the aging process. The appearance. The appearance is judged by looking at the wine through the light. A brilliant wine reflects light and also sparkles. It is free from floating particles. On the other hand, a dull wine has floating particles and looks slightly cloudy. A cloudy wine does not reflect the light.
Select your wine of choice and pour about 50 mils. To evaluate appearance, you might like to hold it at a 45 degree angle. This gives you a better perspective. You can also hold it against a white background to help evaluate appearance. When we evaluate wine appearance, it's important to look at both the clarity and the colour. Commercial wines should generally have good clarity, so we might describe them as clear, brilliant or transparent. But sometimes wines will have poor clarity and they might be described as dull, cloudy or hazy. My wine has good clarity. I'd describe it as brilliant and lively. The body of wine. Through the body of wine, one can measure it while its wateriness. The body is usually measured by the twirling it around the glass and seeing how long it takes to bring down the wine that rise on the glass. Characteristic of the body of the wine. Full-bodied wine are heavy, robust, and not watery. The wines also break into legs as they come down inside of the glass. Light-bodied wines are not heavy. These wines do not cling to the sides of the glass when it when twirled around. The factors that made up the general characteristic of wine includes acidity, alcohol, tannins, and sweetness. So lighter-bodied wines has more acidity but less tannins, less alcohol, and less sweetness. But the full-bodied wines has less acidity, but more alcohol, more tannins, and more sweetness. Comparing these two, we like skim milk for light-bodied wines and whole milk for full-bodied wines. The skim milk is less dense than the whole milk. Light-bodied wines are more like white wines than full-bodied wines are red wines. So our next topic is checking wine faults. How to tell if the wine has gone bad? So first, the smell is off. The red wine tastes sweet. The cork is pushed out slightly from the bottle. The wine is brownish color. You detect a stringent of chemical leaf flavors. It tastes fizzy, but it's not a sparkling wine. So first, oxidation. Oxidized wine lose their brightness both in color and in flavor. Deep reds turn to brownish, or brownish orange color and have a strange vinegar and caram caramelized apple characteristic. So when oxida oxidation happens, red wines change color and smells dirty and stewed. Next is that tricoloro anisole or TCA. The cork painted wines have a dank col odor that smells almost exactly like wet newspaper, moldy cardboard, or wet dog. As far as the taste goes, cork wines have very little fruit flavors and be dominated by this aforementioned of flavors. So next, sulfur compounds. The most frequent manifestation of a sulfur-related flaw is called mercaptan. If you notice rotten egg and fart burnt rubber, cooked garlic, or skunk smells in your wine after decanting it for some time, then you probably have a mercaptan problem. So next, heat damage. The wine smells jammy, sort of a sweet, but process. The smell is somewhat like a wine reduction sauce. Mixed with a nutty brown roasted sugar type aroma. Heat damage often comprises the seal of the bottle so it can be accompanied by oxidation. Microbial and bacterial taint. They impart certain positive flavors but also produce signature wine faults. For example, if your wine smells like gerbil cage, sommelier call this mousy and it's often found in Natural wines. When you try a wine and breathe out and get a whiff of hay bale, this is called repines, and suggests other overproductive wild microbe. So our next topic is open and serve wine. Open and serve wine is also known as the wine service. It is the process of presenting, opening, and serving wine to the guests. So wine service is very important because regardless of the price of the wine, 
it is important that the service staff knows how to execute the proper etiquette of serving wine. So open wine. Before bringing the bottle to the table, servers should be sure to have the following items on hand. So the corkscrew or wine key, foil cutter, napkin or glass polisher, and coaster. So serving wine, serve the wine in the right side of the glass. So red wine tastes better when served slightly below room temperature from 53 Fahrenheit to 69 Fahrenheit. White wine tastes great from about 44 degree Fahrenheit to 57 Fahrenheit. And sparkling wines, affordable sparklers do great at 38 degree Fahrenheit to 45 degree Fahrenheit. Follow these steps and you'll be serving wine like a professional sommelier in no time. Transport the wine bottle with care using the lito, which is the service napkin, draped over your forearm and present it to the host, the person who ordered the wine, with the label facing out and with the lito framing the label. Introduce the bottle. State the name of the wine, vintage, producer and grape variety if applicable, and have the host approve that it is the correct wine before opening. The bottle should be opened in the air about one meter away from the table. The bottle should never rest on the table during the entire service procedure. Do your best to keep the bottle as still as possible. While the capsule and cork are being removed, the label should remain facing the host at all times. Cut the capsule on the lower lip, then remove it and place it in your pocket. Wipe the top of the cork while it's still in the bottle using the inside part of the lito. Avoid cork perforation and ensure the cork is retrieved smoothly while uncorking with no pop sound. Inspect the cork. Here you are looking for pliability or possible wine tainting through the cork. Present the cork to the host and place it on the table within the host's reach, wet and up. Wipe the mouth of the bottle, removing any possible cork or wine residue. Pour the host approximately one ounce of wine for he or she to sample and wait for approval before proceeding. Serve all other guests from the right-hand side, making sure to serve ladies first. The bottle should never touch the glass. Fill the glass with approximately 4 ounces of wine and wipe the bottle mouth after every pour. Try to avoid drips or spills on the table by giving the bottle a quick turn with the wrist well over the glass, immediately after the wine has been poured. Pop up the host's glass last, even if the host is female. Lastly, place the bottle on the table and position it with the label facing the host on the center of the table nearest the host. Remove the cork from the table and place it in pocket. As you leave the table, make a positive closing statement such as, enjoy your wine. So our next topic is recommending appropriate wine and food combinations to customers. Generally, white wines are best paired with white meats like fish and chicken and red wines are best paired with red meats like pork and beef. So in the next following slides, I will discuss to you the best food pairings in specific wines. The seven rules for perfect pairing. So first, serve a dry rosé with hors d'oeuvres. Serve an alcoholic white with anything you can squeeze a lemon or a lime on. Try low alcohol wines with spicy foods. Match with red meats with tannic reds. With lighter meats, pair the wine with a sauce. Choose early earthy wines with earthy foods and for desserts go with a lighter wine so these are the food and wine pairing guidelines so as you can see there are it is very specific so green veggie are for light dry white sparkling wine rose wine so Peanut wine is great for dishes with earthy flavors. Recipe made with ingredients like mushrooms and truffles tastes great with reds like peanut wine or dolcetto, which are light body, light bodied but full of savory depth. Chardonnay for fatty fish or fish in a rich sauce. Silky whites, for instance, chardonnays from California, Chile, or Australia are delicious with fish like salmon or any kind of seafoods in a lush sauce. Champagne is perfect with anything salty, most dry sparkling wines, such as Brut, Champagne, and Spanish Calva. Actually, have a faint of touch of sweetness. 
that makes them extra refreshing when served with salty foods like crispy odon noodles with nori salt. Carbonate Sauvignon is fabulous with juicy red meat. California Cabernet, Bordeaux, and Bordeaux style blends are terrific with steaks or chops like lamb chops or fizzled herbs. The firm tannins is in these wines refresh the palate all after each bite of meat. Sauvignon Blanc goes with the tart dressing and sauces. Tangy foods like scallops and grapefruit onion salad would overwhelm zippy wines like Sauvignon. Pinot Grillo pairs with light fish dishes, light seafood dishes like seafood tostada bites seem to take on more flavor when much and equally delicate white wines such as Pinot Grillo or Arnis from Italy or Cabell from France. So our next topic is facts about cocktail drinks. Cocktails. So in 1776, Betty Flanagan invented the American cocktail. It, it was her bar house cornets in Elmsford, New York, which was decorated with brightly colored tail feathers of cocks that she had the notion to add a cock's tail feather as the steerer to each drink. Hence the name cocktail during that time. Cocktail was often referred to as twisters. Tomato juice and vodka. The tomato juice and vodka made by Ferdinand Petiot, a barkeep at Harris Bar in Paris in the 1920s, was named after the Sovereign Mary of Britain, who due to the oppression of the Protestants achieved the epithet well drink. It was later called a bucker of blood, and that point red snapper and morning wonder it was equated with the U in with the US in the 1930s. So here's the ingredients of the tomato juice and vodka. Bloody Mary time, homeboy. This is one of Ernest Hemingway's favorites. Okay, this Sunday when you're all watching the Super Bowl, this is what you want to be drinking. Okay, so vodka, lime juice, okay? We're making the mix right now. We're just getting all the ingredients in. That's right, work out. Get show your muscles. Hit it with some Tabasco, okay? It's got a ton of stuff in it, so just watch. The proportions you use kind of up to you. Worcestershire sauce. Pronounce it, Worcestershire. Horseradish, straight from a horse's... I, I don't know exactly where it's from. Google that. Sea salt, okay? Black pepper. Could it be from a horse? Anyway, hit it with some tomato juice, and now I'm gonna pour this back and forth between two cups just to get it mixed, okay? Uh huh, uh huh. Now I can put that aside as I prepare for the sexification of the glass we can use. That's tahini and sea salt. Get those two mixed together, rim the glass, and then we dip it in that bad boy just to sexify, okay? All right, mm-hmm, good to go. No girls actually made this one with me. That's why I had to grab Sheena to do the little taste test at the end. You'll see what I see, stick a celery in there. Now we pour in our little mix, good to go, all right? Then after that, grab a bacon. Emma just fried that, seriously, okay? That's fresh bacon. Look like crap, but it's fresh, okay? Then we have these little shrimpy shrimps, okay? They fresh too, okay? Put in some olives, uh-huh. The Bloody Mary. This one looked good, okay? Then salt bay hit me, that's right, home boy. Ooh! This is like the Kiri. This is a mixed drink developed in or around 1898 by Jennings S. Cox, an American who found his in as a boss designer of the Spanish American Particle Organization close to the town of Daiquiri in Havana, Cuba. So here's the ingredients of a Daiquiri. Lime juice, demerara sugar syrup, light rum, and lime twist. This right here is easily one of my favorite rum drinks ever. The classic daiquiri, okay? She just chill in the glass. Don't mind that part. Let's get down to business. You got your ice. Look at the sexy ices in there. Hit it with some white rum, silver rum, light rum, whatever you want to call it. Come behind that with lime juice. Beautiful, you squeeze in your fresh lime juice and you hit it with simple syrup. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the drink. You shake that and I know it's super simple, but it is delicious. It's a reason why that's a classic, is this drink old, okay? Okay, your granddaddy's granddaddy used to sip this back in the day.
Profanditi charge. It is made when the shot glass loaded with bourbon is taken and plunges into a huge glass of lager. At that point, the brew is drunk. So here's a video on how to make a profanity charge or death charge. Okay, there's a drink called that we did back in the day. Okay, there's a drink called that we did back in the day called an Irish depth charge, but some of the ingredients weren't Irish. So this is a real Irish depth charge, okay? We switch it up. So this is Irish whiskey. We can flip that over in our pine glass. You see this? So this is like a reverse bomb style shot. And then we come behind with some Murphy's Irish Stout, okay? So we, we keep in all the ingredients in here uniquely Irish. And then we come behind this with some Guinness, okay? Beautiful, Guinness Irish Stout. Pour that in there. And that's why it's a real Irish depth charge. Okay, so now what happens? Okay, you pull the plug, bang! Okay, that Jameson's drops out. And then you go in, chug, 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 chug. All right, you don't sip it like that. So next is the frappe or frappe. Frappe is a French expression for a beverage that is super chilled by the expansion of squash or shaved ice over which alcohols are then poured. So here's a video on how to make a frappe with alcohol. Hard Frappuccino, homeboy, okay? Check this bad boy out. So we start with some ice, hit that with some vodka, okay? Come behind that with some rum chata, delicioso. Followed by some coffee liqueur, rum chata, hit me up. Ice coffee, okay? And then we follow with some more ice cubes, just to get it right. Blend, 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 blend. Sexify our little cup. Because we, we, we're trying to create this nice little Frappuccino feel, which is why we didn't put it in a glass. We want you to feel like you actually have a Frappuccino. Put some whipped cream on top. By the way, Starbucks owns the name Frappuccino. Buy Starbucks, okay? That's what it was. So the next, the Gibson, a martini mixed drink decorated with a little white onion. Named after the American artist Charles Dana Gibson and celebrated for his drawings of the turn of the country, the Gibson Young Lady. The story went that Gibson requested a martini or dinner really presented with an olive from the barkeep Charlie Connolly of the Players Club in New York City. Connolly wound up out of olives and rather served the beverage with two small white onions. The mixed drink was first referenced in print in 1930. The Gimlet. In the 1890s, an English maritime specialist, Gimlet, was worried about the overwhelming drinking his men were acquainted with. So he weakened the gin with lime juice and in spite of the fact that it didn't discourage them he advertently made another beverage the ingredients on how to make a gimlet the gin simple syrup and lime juice the gimlet this is simply gin well we get some pretty ice cubes first then we hit it with some gin come behind that with some fresh squeezed lime juice followed by some simple syrup very easy to make. Shake, 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 and you're good to go, okay? All you need to buy for this now is some gin, make your little homemade simple syrup, and you are great to go. Garnish with a little lime, okay? Just to sexify. You don't even need that. If you're home, you're not trying to impress anyone. The Har Harvey Wallbanger. It appeared in the Southern California. Tom Harvey would show up at his preferred bar following a day surfing and requested as Italian screwdriver. At that point, in the wake of devouring a few glasses of this mixture, he endeavored to leave and began slamming into dividers, henceforth the name. Here's a video on how to make this. So, ice. Then add some vodka. Then orange juice. Then stir. Then Galliano. And garnish it with an orange twist. The highball. 
In St. Louis in the 1980s, early railroaders utilized a ball on high posts as a side of railroad trains to proceed or accelerate. This flagging gadget was known as the high ball. The train man consistently on a quick calendar had time just for a snappy beverage. Consequently, when barkeeps found that ice in a bourbon and water could be blended expediently into a superb beverage, they consider it a highball. So next, Irish Espresso. Irish Espresso was presented by Joe Sheridan in 1938 to carrier to travelers who conquered cold plains and rough flights. Airline stewards would facilitate the agony by adding a fix of bourbon to hot espresso. The bourbon became Irish when flights showed up the withdrawal of Shannon Air Terminal, Ireland. Another story which occurred in 1952 was about proprietor of the parlor at Shannon Air Terminal contribution clients, solid, hot espresso bound without any difficulty the long holds up between flights. So next, the Mai Tai. This is this world-renowned beverage made in 1944 by Diller Vic. It's made in interpretation of Polynesian of to signify the best amazing. So this is the ingredients of the Mai Tai. Orange, mint, white rum, dark rum, and lime juice. Here's a video on how to make a Mai Tai. Ladies and gentlemen, the classic Mai Tai. So, we get ice in our mixing glass, come behind that with some white rum, silver rum, whatever you want to call it, orange curacao, some fresh squeezed lime juice, all right? Some orchard syrup, which is like an, uh, which is an almond syrup. Shake, 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 ice in our glass, and we pour our mix in, okay? Beautiful, but we're still not done. Then you come behind that and you lay on some dark rum, okay? Beautiful drink, fun drink, created many, many years ago. Stick in an orange slice, pineapple, cherries, all that sexify your glass, and there you have it, a little bit of mint leaves, you know. Don't worry about The Manhattan. The previous Manhattan Club, a six-story building raised on Madison Road in 1859, was initially a living arrangement for Leonard Jerome, the dad of Jenny Jerome. Here's a video on how to make a Manhattan. Okay, this is Manhattan, and guess what? We're using Jack Daniels. I know some of you are gonna go, wait a minute now, Jack. Couldn't you come with something more elaborate? You better sit tight, homeboy. We cater to the everyday man, okay? This is what the everyday man drinks. So that's Jack Daniels, sweet vermouth, followed by a little bit of bitters. We shake that up, okay? And you see our little coupe glass in the back. We had some ice in there just chilling it so it could, you know, be nice and cold. Pour our mix in, drop in a cherry, and we are good to go, homeboy. That one's done. Margarita, purposely prepared by a Virginia City barkeep in memory of his sweetheart who was un intentionally shot during a tavern fight. Another story was Margarita mixed drink purposely made in 1948 in Ap Acapulco, Mexico by a so socialite Margarita Sames. Her formula contained three sections, tequila, the section of control, and one section for lime juice. Here's the ingredients of how to make a margarita. Simple syrup, tequila, orange liquor, lime juice, and salt and lime. So here's a video on how to make a margarita. The classic margarita. Simple, straightforward, easy to make. Ice, followed by tequila. Mm-hmm, got the tequila going on in there. Then we come behind that with some Cointreau. Delicious. Fresh squeezed lime juice up in there. Bingo, bingo. All right, shake, 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 shake. Put that aside, let's sexify the glass right now. So we put some lime on the rim and dip that into coarse salt. Remember, it's coarse salt, not that stuff that you cook with on board. Well, people cook with coarse salt. You get the one, not the one you put on your chicken, all right? Don't use that. Pour that in and then there you have it. That's a classic margarita. Okay, put a little lime on just to sexify. So Martini. Martinez was the initial name of this well-known beverage, first presented in 1860 by Jerry Thomas in San Francisco's Occidental Lodging. The first formula was impressively not the same as what we know today. It comprised of one jigger of gin, one wine glass of sweet vermouth, a scramble of sharp flavoring, 
two rugs mar maraschino alcohol. It was then shaken well and decorated with lemon juice. So this is a video on how to make a martini. This is a classic gin martini. Okay, some of you martini aficionados might be, well, that, that's not exactly right. Make it the way you want to make it. There's a million martini recipes out there, okay? So gin, come behind that with some vermouth. Stir, stir, stir. Grab our glass that we, glass that we had chilling, okay? And we pour in our mix, and then she hits it with a little bit of bitters, and we are good to go. Beautiful, all right? Stick in some uh, olives, okay? This is not my kind of drink. That, that one, a little too advanced for me. Moscow Donkey, a mixed drink made of promoted in 1946 at Jock's Morgan Rooster and Bowl Eatery in Los Angeles, California. It comprised of vodka and ginger brew with a wedge of a new lime. Singapore Sling, this beverage, initially called as a waterway sling, was made in the 1915 by a Tong shelter, a barkeep of the Long Bar at the Pulse Inn in to Singapore. A video on how to make a Singapore sling. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Singapore sling classic drink. This was made at the Long Bar, the Raffles Hotel in Singapore, actually. So you start off with some gin, okay? Come behind that gin with some Benedictine. Come behind that with some cherry herring. This is using a lot of these really old liqueurs, okay? Fresh squeezed lime juice because you don't see ben Benedictine and cherry herring. I mean, mixologists use it nowadays, but the regular people, not so much. Pineapple juice. Bit of grenadine, okay? Angostura bitters, this is a real cool drink, actually. So I suggest you give this a try, even though it got a ton of ingredients in it. Put some ice in a hurricane glass, okay? And then we pour in our delicious mix, okay? And you know you gotta garnish that bad boy, a little pineapple, cherry on the side, stick a straw in, and there you have it. That was a zombie. Created by a Los Angeles restaurateur, where the scavenger, which included maybe every sort of rum he had close by at his bar. This beverage flaunted a test that numerous essentially couldn't pass just one to a client. Bar administrations ought to be executed as per endorsed gorgeous and with benevolence to guarantee consumer loyalty. For a quicker and increasingly effective bar administration, mission plow necessities, bar stocks, instruments, Hardware and so on must be prepared before the beginning of task. So our next topic is prepare and mix cocktail and non-alcoholic drinks. So there are three ways in making cocktails and these are stirring, shaking, and building. So in the next following slide, you will see how some cocktails are made. So great mixers for vodka, the ginger beer, lemonade, Cranberry juice, pineapple juice, tonic or soda water on orange juice. To make a perfect cocktail, use this drink ratio when mixing. One for alcohol or the spirit, one for the special agents like grenadine and blue curacao, and three for modifiers like cola, tonic water, and other juices. So here's some tips on how to make a perfect cocktail. So use 100% juice to add natural sugars and flavors to your drinks. Choose unsweetened flavored seltzers instead of sodas. Add whole fruits. Use fresh herbs. Make your own simple syrup. So there are tons of cocktails out there, but I will discuss to you five classic cocktails. So this video will show you how to make a mojito. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the classic mojito. Okay, the mojito is from Cuba, in case you're curious. Okay, so you will start off with some lime wedges and mint leaves. Come behind that with some simple syrup. We have a simple syrup recipe on here. If you can't buy it, you can make it at home. All right, and then what you want to do is muddle. Okay, you're not trying to create a paste. You just want to break the leaves, break the limes a little bit, allow some of those oils to get out, put in some ice, and then you pour in your white rum followed by some soda water, and this right here is your typical mojito. You garnish with a little lime, stick a straw in, okay? And on tipsybartender.com, guys, we have over 40. So another cocktail is dark and stormy. Dark and stormy. Okay, two simple ingredients, but watch the way Emma does this one, okay? Because we, we, we played around with this. And to keep it real sexy, what you do is you pour the ginger beer first, 
and then you just put that nice black seal rum on top. I think it's originally made with black seal. Garnish with a little lime and you're good to go. That is our dark and stormy. Mix it up before you drink it, but serving, that's super sexy. Video will show you how to make a martini. This is a classic gin martini, okay? Some of you martini aficionados might be, well, that, that's not exactly right. Make it the way you want to make it. There's a million martini recipes out there, okay? So gin, come behind that with some vermouth. Stir, stir, stir. Grab our glass that we, glass that we had chilling, okay? And we pour in our mix, and then she hits it with a little bit of bitters, and we are good to go. Beautiful, all right? Stick in some uh, olives, okay? This is not my kind of drink. That, that one, that little too advanced for me. Another cocktail is mint julep. This is a mint julep, okay? All you Kentucky Derby fans, all you people that are like horses, this drinks for you, okay? You and your horse could drink this together. Okay, mint, that's kind of wet. Mint leaves, okay? <laughs> Some powdered sugar and a little bit of water, and you're just doing that to really dissolve the sugar. Put in some crushed ice, and then we hit it with some Jim Beam. How can we use Jack in this one? Okay, you all want to go a different direction? Fine, whatever. All right, stir, 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 and we are good to go. So another cocktail is margarita. The classic margarita. Simple, straightforward, easy to make. Ice, followed by tequila. Mm-hmm, got the tequila going on in there. Then we come behind that with some Cointreau. Delicious. Fresh squeezed lime juice up in there. Bingo, bingo. All right, shake, 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 shake. Put that aside, let's sexify the glass right now. So we put some lime on the rim and dip that into coarse salt. Remember, it's coarse salt, not that stuff that you cook with on Well, people cook with coarse salt. You get the one, not the one you put on your chicken, all right? Don't use that. Pour that in and then there you have it. That's a classic margarita. Okay, put a little lime on just to sexify. Our next topic is the non-alcoholic drinks. So non-alcoholic beverages is a drink that contains no alcohol. In the U.S., a drink which contains less than 0.5% alcohol by volume is almost termed as a non-alcoholic drink, such as low-alcohol beer and apple cider. From freshly squeezed orange juice to chemical-packed energy drinks to teas and coffees, the spectrum of non-alcoholic beverage is broad. So water. The most basic beverage on the planet is also, is also the most important. Come in various forms, sparkling, tap, steel, bottle, and etc. And it is the lubricant for all of life's processes. Milk. One of the most natural substances in the world. Milk is produced from the mammary glands of certain animals. C. This drink is primarily composed of water but infused with various nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants found in the tea leaves. Tea comes in many different forms including black, green, white, oolong, and puree. Coffee. It is primarily used as the stimulant and billions of cups of coffee are consumed every year around the world due to high levels of caffeine found in, the bev in this beverage. Roasted coffee beans can come in many different varieties, flavors, and intensities, which is why there are thousands of different coffee blends. Soft drinks. Carbonated beverages are beloved by children, but many parents are wary of allowing their children to drink too much soda or pop. Soft drinks tend to have no vitamins or minerals, and they contain carbohydrates exclusively in the form of sugar. Juices. Juice can come in as many varieties as there are types of fruits and vegetables. Fruit and vegetable juices are not only refreshing but also very good for you due to their vitamin and mineral content. Energy drinks. The recent craze of energy drinks is understandable in our fast-paced world, but many of these supercharged beverages are, can be hazardous to our health if drunk in excess. They may give you a healthy energy boost, but some of that boost comes in the form of sugar because there is a lot of it in most of and of the energy drinks. This beverage is a mixture of two or more juices and other soft drinks. It derives from its name from mimicking cocktails, thus the word mock. 
Some also prefer calling it punch or virgin cocktail. Milkshakes. This for frothy beverage is basically a cold drink made of milk. It is sweet in taste due to the presence of fruits or chocolate, sometimes ice creams too. Smoothies. A smoothie is a blend of fruits, vegetables, milk, yogurt, ice cream, and other foods. It is a thick beverage, usually sweet and enjoy chill. Cocoa. Cocoa contains hot water or milk mixed with cocoa powder and shave of melted chocolate. It is considered a sweet treat and not a healthy beverage, but there are an impressive amount of surprising benefits in it. Tonic water. This carbonated bitter flavor soft drinks has quinine or a bitter alkaloid dissolved in it. It is often added to alcoholic drinks, especially gin and vodka. So that's it. Thank you for listening.